Hello, good afternoon. Uh, all right, just a few things here at the top and then happy to jump in and take your questions. Yesterday, the Secretary of the Navy exonerated 258 black so sailors who were unjustly court-martialed in the wake of the devastating explosion at the Port of Chicago Naval Magazine in California, which killed 320 sailors on July 17, 1944. After a thorough review of the case and related materials, the General Counsel of the Navy concluded that there were significant legal errors during the court's martial and that the defendants were improperly tried together despite conflicting interests and denied a meaningful right to counsel. Secretary Austin applauded the Navy's legal review and decision to ensure our service members, our military families, and our civilian employees are treated with fairness and dignity, especially within our military justice systems. Switching gears, as you know, U.S. Central Command has been executing operations to surge humanitarian aid into Gaza through air, land, and sea. Yesterday, the Department of Defense announced that its temporary pier, or the joint logistics over the shore capability that has been used to surge humanitarian assistance into Gaza through a maritime corridor, has concluded its operations. With collaboration from 12 nations, international partners, USAID, and the United Nations, the temporary pier successfully delivered nearly 20 million pounds of aid, which is the highest volume of humanitarian assistance the U.S. military has ever delivered into the Middle East. The temporary pier achieved its goal of providing an additive means of delivering high volumes of humanitarian aid to the people of Gaza. In the coming days, CENTCOM will work with USAID to deliver the remaining aid commodities currently afloat to the Port of Ashdod in Israel for onward distribution to Gaza, and will provide coordination and liaison support for humanitarian aid deliveries at the request of USAID when appropriate. And finally, the Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, General C.Q. Brown Jr., met today with the Japanese State Minister of Defense, Japan Chief of Staff, and the Chairman of the Republic of Korea Joint Chiefs of Staff in Tokyo. The military leaders discuss progress on the trilateral defense relationship, exchange assessments on the regional security situation, stress the importance of enhancing close trilateral coordination in response to the provocation posed by the DPRK, and reaffirmed their positions regarding the escalatory, dangerous, and aggressive behavior by the People's Republic of China throughout the region. The TriChad leaders underscored that U.S.-Japan ROC security cooperation is critical not only to the security and prosperity of the Indo-Pacific region, but also to their shared global interest to ensure peace and stability in the Korean pen Peninsula, the Indo-Pacific, and beyond. And with that, I'd be happy to take your questions. Lita. Hi. Thanks, Sabrina. Um, if, can you just clarify a couple of things sure. on the pier? The Army boats were used all along to transfer the aid from the floating dock uh, to the Trident Pier. Will they be used to take aid from the dock, if there's any left there, to Ashdod at all, do you know? And I, just a couple of points on that. Sure, sorry, just for clarification, which dock are you referring to, that, the pier itself? They were being used to take aid that was, the aid came from Cyprus to the big floating uh, dock that mm -hmm. was several miles offshore. The army boats were used to take the aid from there to the Trident Pier. Oh, I see what you're right? saying. Right? Uh -huh. Are they going to be used to take the aid from the dock, floating dock, to Ashdod? I believe, from my understanding, it's the aid that's on our ships right now will just be offloaded in Ashdod and then driven by contracted drivers or um, drivers that the WFP have identified into Israel. I'm not aware that those army boats will have a role in that because the aid is already on the ships that would then pull into Ashdod and have it be directly translated. And are these largely the DOT and commercial ships or are these also <coughs> Navy ships? It's my understanding that these are U.S. military ships that are continuing to, that have the aid. And as you heard uh, Vice Admiral Cooper yesterday say, that we are committed to making sure that the aid that has been uh, transloaded onto our ships is transloaded off of our ships into Ashdod for further distribution into Gaza. So are these ships that are in Cyprus or are these ships that are at the pier? I believe these are ships that are making its way or already at the pier. Um, look, this is 
ongoing moving. I believe uh, also there's you know a, a few million pounds of aid that are on each of our uh, vessels that need to be transloaded off. Um, so it's going to take some time. Uh, we're committed to doing that, but um, how we do that for more specifics, you know, I direct you to CENTCOM just for, for more specifics if you want like sp- specific ships, but we're just committed to making sure that that aid gets to Gaza. Okay. Um, and is that all in addition to the five million pounds of aid that, that Admiral Cooper yesterday said was still in Cyprus? I believe what uh, Admiral Cooper was referring to is there are five million pounds of aid total between Cyprus and on the ships that will get uh, moved through the Ashdod corridor down into Gaza. So it's a total figure. Last question. Sure. Will the military be involved at all in what is the future plan now to deliver aid from Cyprus to um, directly to the Ashdod pier and then from the pier um, into Gaza? Will the military have a role in that other than the coordination <coughs> cell? Our role would, will mainly shift to an advisory role. Uh, the the in the immediate future, um, we're going to maintain some coordination elements um, that have been in place, such as the coordination cell that you know is in Cyprus and in Israel. We want to make sure that aid is going to continue to flow into Gaza. Um, but this new route that aid flows through Ashdod will ultimately be managed by USAID and other um, humanitarian organizations. So I'd include the World Food Program in that as well. Okay, so then the, the coordination cell participation. Going right away? now, the coordination cell is st- is still stood up and will remain in place for the you know for uh, for a short time in the immediate. Um, but you know we're we're making we are working to ensure that all the aid gets into Gaza. Um, and in order to do that, from what's on our ships and what's still at Cyprus, that coordination cell is still stood up. Yes. Thank you. So I have a couple on Ukraine, then one on the Gaza Pier Sure. So uh, we heard Republican uh, Vice President Amini and Mr. Vance has repeatedly argued against military aid to Ukraine. And he said that the U.S., I quote, lacks the capacity to manufacture the amount of weapons Ukraine needs to win the war, in particular 1 in 55 millimeter shells and uh, Patriot interceptors. What can you say to that? So as you can appreciate, I'm not going to comment on uh, political speeches or um, – uh, the campaign, but I think what you've seen from this department and from this administration is a commitment to Ukraine uh, for as long as it takes, and that's what we're focused on. Um, I think it's important to remember too that uh, under this administration, we've invigorated our defense industrial base, and we are creating jobs right here at home when it comes to manufacturing 155 millimeter rounds and other capabilities that are not only enhancing our defense industrial base but helping the Ukrainians. Um, I also would push back on the notion that Ukraine can't win this war. Uh, We have seen them be incredibly successful on the battlefield. They continue to dig in and push the Russians back. Um, This was never going to be over in a day. This is going to take time, and it has taken time, and it's going to continue to take time. And the support that Ukraine has garnered from all around the world, I think— is a true testament to the United States' also commitment to them. So um, appreciate the question, but I can only really speak to what the department is doing and what we're committed to doing. All right. So, Aaron, can you, uh, do you have a breakdown of how much funding has been allocated from this latest supplemental uh, for military aid packages to Ukraine and how much uh, is still left? I don't have a breakdown on uh, from allocations of different PDA packages from the supplemental when it was last authorized. I mean, we've put out a a press release every time we've authorized a drawdown package or a USAI. So I just encourage you to look back on what we have announced. I just don't have that breakdown by by package in front of me. Latest on the Gaza Pier. So what ultimately led to the decision to dismantle the pier before all aid from Cyprus arrived in Gaza? And is there a final cost for the Gaza Pier, because we heard the Vice Admiral Cooper said it came um, under other cost, in other cost. Yeah, so I'll take the cost first and then um, can address your other question. In terms of the cost, um, we're, we're still doing our assessments, so we'll have more to share with you um, in hopefully the following days and weeks. Uh, we do expect it to come a little under budget, um, but we'll keep you updated. I just don't have a final number on that. Um, in terms of why, uh, well, I mean, I, again, as we've always said from the beginning, we always said this was going to be a temporary measure that was put into place. Um, we are certainly aware uh, 
and and as you have reported on, some of the weather conditions and environmental factors that have faced the pier. Uh, we know that sea states were going to get worse as the summer progressed. That um, is something that was always known. But I think what's important to remember is that all the aid that was in Cyprus or has gone to Cyprus has either been transloaded off of that temporary pier or will be moved into Ashdod. So we've moved out almost every single piece of aid that has come in through Cyprus. Um, so I think that's very important to remember. I also think that um, it's important to remember that this pier delivered the highest volume of humanitarian assistance the U.S. military has ever delivered to the Middle East. Um, so I know there have been criticisms, and I know uh, from, from some people here in this room, and I know that there have been uh, you know some setbacks when it has come to the pier. But at the end of the day, we delivered nearly 20 million pounds of aid, and um, I think I think that is a, a real testament to the commitment of our personnel um, at CENTCOM, and um, you know the commitment to also ensuring that other avenues opened up, such as the Ashdod corridor. Natasha. Thanks, Sabrina. So just one clarifying question. So yesterday, Admiral Cooper, he told reporters that at least for the near term, quote, we expect to use the same vessels that have been transporting aid from Cyprus to the pier, now using those same vessels transporting aid from Cyprus to Ashdod. Yeah. yeah. But you said a few minutes ago, I think that it would be mostly an advisory role. So which is it? Is it an advisory role or is it actually the military transporting this aid, continuing to transport the aid from Cyprus to, to Ashdod now? So, so once we complete the transfer of aid of the, uh, like, I think Admiral Cooper mentioned about five million pounds of aid still needs to be um, loaded off of our ships. That's when our role will transition into more of an advisory role. But we have to complete those transfer that transfer of aid. So uh, it's not like the aid is going to sit on our ships and all of a sudden it's not going to move off or go anywhere. We're going to help, of course, with offloading it into Ashdod. And then once that aid moves off into Ashdod and moves into Gaza, um, this is going to be a um, a mission that you know transitions into a next phase, which will be managed by USAID and other and other partners. Okay, thanks. Yeah, Liz. Thanks. Um, earlier this week, there was some reporting that um, Al Assad Air Base in Iraq was targeted by some uh, Iranian proxy drones. Do you have any details of what happened? How many were shot down? Yeah, thanks, uh, Liz, for the question. So that's correct. On July 16th, two one-way attack UAS systems attacked uh, U.S. and coalition forces at Al-Assad Air Base in Iraq. Uh, one system was successfully destroyed and one impacted the base, but it caused minimal damage. Yeah. Constantine. Thanks. Um, <clears throat> so the National Guard Bureau Chief, General Hokanson, is retiring in two weeks, I believe. Um, a new a replacement for him has not been announced. Uh, has the Pentagon sent a recommendation or a name to the White House? Yeah, so as you know, all uh, nominations and announcements will come from the White House. I don't have anything to read out today and certainly wouldn't get into conversations that we're having with the White House. But when we have that announcement ready to be made, it will be it will be public. I mean, it, it looks like we're setting up a situation where there's basically not going to be a transition period between Hokanson and whoever replaces him, is there any concern from the Pentagon that there's not a replacement ready to go? Again, I, uh, no, there is not. Yes, Charlie. Sabrina, forgive me <clears throat> this question. Is there any reaction from Defense Secretary Austin after President Biden appeared to blank his name in a recent interview? Um, I've seen that clip, and I will say that um, I would urge you to look at the full context of the clip as he was answering a question, I believe, more about um, the administration more broadly, but would refer you to the White House for, for more of his comments. Um, the secretary has absolute confidence in the president. Um, he was just with the president for m at least two days at the NATO summit, spent many, many hours with him in bilateral meetings, uh, was there for his press conference. Um, he has absolute confidence in the president. But no reaction from this specific interview? No reaction from the specific interview, other than that he has absolute confidence in the president. Thank you. Yeah. Yes. Thank you, Sabrina. Um, recently, UNRWA um, has been announced that uh, five of their schools in Gaza has been targeted by uh, the Israeli military in the last 10 days. And these schools were using as uh, refugee camps. So um, th these strikes came despite of uh, calls from the Secretary Austin to his Israeli counterpart to take all necessary steps to minimize civilian harm. Um, do you believe that the Israeli take this warning uh, seriously? And what do you say about that? 
So I haven't seen, and I apologize, I haven't seen the exact reports that you're referencing. Um, I We do believe that the Israelis do take our concerns seriously. Um, civilian casualties and the need to reduce civilian casualties is a uh, topic of conversation on almost every single call that the secretary has done with Minister Gallant. And that continues not just at his level, but at other levels throughout this building and the inner agency. Um, so it's something that we take very seriously. We we think our, our concerns are being heard. We have seen behaviors change. Um, there is absolutely the need and and there, there must be more done. Um, but I just can't address those specific reports, unfortunately. I just haven't seen them. Yeah. Yeah, Noah. Yeah, I'm wondering if you have any reaction to China's Ministry of Foreign Affairs yesterday saying that they were shutting down talks with the U.S. on arms control um, in response to objections over weapon sales to Taiwan. Have you seen that statement? And um, do you have any thoughts on the future of arms control talks going forward? Yeah, I'm just not going to respond to the statement, um, but I can tell you that you know we have a commitment to the One China policy. Um, you've seen the secretary continue to raise concerns about uh, the PRC's behavior within the region. And as I read out at the top, uh, the chairman was just there in the region, uh, not only deepening ties there, but also raising concerns about some of the behavior and activity that we're seeing. Um, so I'll just leave it at that. Mm -hmm. There was... Oh, yeah, also, some confusion on when they were actually paused, whether it took place earlier in the summer after new President Lai's speech in Taiwan, or whether it actually was cut yesterday or this week. Um, do you have any sense on that? Yeah, I'm just not going to be able to provide more on that, but thank you. Yes. Thanks. Uh, I wanted to ask if you could give us an update, if possible, on the AUKUS agreement. Are there um, any next steps? I thought I heard um, plans to make an announcement this fall. Um, I don't know if that was under Pillar 2 or just other steps in the AUKUS agreement? I don't have any announcements today, but certainly when it comes to AUKUS, and I know that's something that has been um, of interest, we always, of course, make those and read those out, but I just don't have anything for you today. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. of course. Yes. Uh, thank you, Cyber. Well, the attack on Al-Assad uh, Air Base, do you know specifically which group launched the attack? No, I don't, I don't have specifics uh, to name, uh, or I don't have a specific group. We know that these are IRGC-backed militias that have launched these attacks on U.S. forces uh, in the past. Um, mo most likely more than not, it is you know one of those affiliate groups, but I can't give you specifics other than that. Uh, one more. From a military perspective, how do you look at the attempts by Turkey and Syria to normalize their relations? Does it come up with any U.S. post change in case these two states reach to a point that normalize their ties? Yeah, I just don't have anything for you on that. You know, we'll, we have our um, own relationship with Turkey. Uh, we'll continue to engage our counterparts there, but I just don't have more for you on that one. Liz. Thanks. Just to follow up on that al Assad sure. attack, was this the first attack on a U.S. military base in the Middle East since February? Yes, yeah. that's correct. And um, is there any sense that these attacks from these proxy groups are going to resume, or do you think this was a one-off? Can't predict the future. Um, as you know, you know, when we also speculate on, uh, on that and can't get into intelligence matters, but um, we certainly don't want to see these attacks resume on our forces, and we've made that clear both, you know, publicly and privately. Um, I just, I can't speculate on, on the future of, you know, we're always going to take measures to protect our forces, um, and I'll just leave it at that. Okay, yes, Jared, and then I'll hop over Real to Mark. question follow-up on sure. the China Assad attack. Uh, has the United States responded to this in any way, or are there plans to do so? Well, we shot down uh, one of the UAS systems, so I think that'd be a response. Um, I'm not going to get ahead of any military uh, decisions or operations. Mosh. Have there been any attacks in uh, Syria as well? Um, there was not an attack. Um, one of our, the... U.S. and coalition forces did destroy one uncrewed aerial system near Green Village, but we don't um, have an assessment of what the intended target was. So I wouldn't say that I wouldn't characterize that as an attack, but they did destroy it out of an abundance of caution. An incident did happen in Syria. Yes, and in, yes, an incident did happen in Syria. Um, they did our forces did shoot down one um, UAS system, but again, it's unclear what the intended target was, and there was no injuries, no damaged infrastructure uh, resulting from this. Okay, Matt, and then I'll go into the back. Just staying on that topic, can sure. you say anything about Iran's possible role in that attack? We talked about these Iran-backed groups. Is it just broadly Iran-backed, or do you think that any 
more direct hand in this particular attack. I, I don't have any more information. I think we can assess that these are Iranian-backed groups that launched this attack. Um, we've seen this behavior before. We certainly don't want to see an escalation on our forces in the region. Um, and so we're going to, of course, take the proper measures that we need to ensure their safety and security. But I, I don't have more for you other than that. Thanks. OK, Lita, and then one more in the back. Just to sure. clarify, wasn't there an attack on a US base in Syria in April? Um, I believe we did shoot down uh, something in April, but I don't know that we the intended target was the base. Okay, because yeah. I thought that this was the first attack since April. You're saying it's the first since February. I'm tracking it since February, yes. Yeah. Yes, one more. Thank you. Uh, regarding to the attacks on the Assad uh, base, um, uh, have you uh, communicate with the Iraqi government, and do you believe that they are doing enough to stop these kinds of attacks? And did, did you get any signs like before these attacks happened from the Iraqi government of, of the officials there. We have a great partnership with the Iraqi government. I'm not going to get into private conversations as we never do from the podium. Um, but we believe that we, you know, we're taking the proper measures to ensure security and safety of our forces. We'll continue to engage our Iraqi partners on the ground. Um, but I don't have more for you. All right. Okay. Thanks, everyone.